I first met Fiona uh, when I went for my job for a senior registrar post, which was um, the Ufton Clinic in Birmingham, which was a very interesting place in those days. Um, and she was on the interview panel. I think that was the first time I met her. And then she became my trainer. I think what Fiona did for me was to humanise psychiatry because I'd come from an academic centre where it was a rather dry discipline. But the fact that I was now training in psychotherapy and she was my trainer and was always there for me when I was sometimes doubting what I was doing. Um, a very sort of human sort of relationship I had with her, which was just what I needed at that time. At Somerville, the big achievements of Dame Fiona were that the sciences really flourished under her principalship and in particular the medical school. These really went forward by leaps and bounds while she was principal. She also played a big part in securing the land and finances for some new buildings and they've also made a big difference to the college. She was very popular with the students. In fact, they used to call her Dame Fee. Dame Fiona will be remembered in a whole range of fields. I think from the field that I know most about, which is the work in the hospital, there's been a culture change in the hospital that allows things psychological and mental to be regarded as normal part of medical care. And that culture change is something I would see not only persisting there, but I thoroughly expect, strongly expect, spreading to other hospitals and institutions. She's an excellent leader. She's a very good listener. She doesn't just do what comes into her head. She, she takes care to listen to a range of voices. Um, she's very good at working with the government, but retaining her independence. And she uh, comes over with, with great authority in a field where she's been quite possibly the top expert for uh, very many years. She has given her name to the Caldicott principles, which are principles about how people's personal data ought to be kept, and also to the Caldicott guardians. There's one in every health and social care organisation. It's now spread into uh, prisons, defence. They have Caldicott guardians who are meant to make sure that the right ethical and legal answers are, are given, and it's spread overseas. So she's. Um, uh, lent her name, or as she puts it, her husband's name, to the, this very important role in a, in, a, in a hugely important area of life. Meeting Dame Fiona was very exciting for me as a Caldicott Guardian, and I guess I was struck by this tremendous intellect combined with a great intellectual curiosity and also great kindness and humour as well. As women psychiatrists, we also owe her a debt of gratitude for being so supportive, such a great role model as the first uh, woman dean and then president of the college. But then secondly, she was very supportive of the founding of the Women in Psychiatry Group, which is now the Women in Mental Health Special Interest Group. And I think that's her leadership and interest in those issues for women psychiatrists how we balance careers, how we manage career advancement, and especially in the context of, of having families, I think has been really, really supportive and important for the profession and for women in particular. Dame Fiona's moved across many important senior roles uh, of great variety. Um, she, she's obviously been the president of, of this Royal College. She, she's been the principal of Somerville College in, in Oxford. She's been one of the university's Pro Vice Chancellors. She's done um, a great deal and is now chair of uh, an Oxford NHS Trust as well as the being the National Data Guardian. She has a formidable ability to pack a lot into, uh, in, 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 into the day and to be able to work across different, different fields and throughout all that to maintain her independence. So this is a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Royal College of Psychiatrists and you might say she isn't practicing as, a, practicing as a psychiatrist, but I would say to you, she is. She's practicing as a psychiatrist within a wider context, within these organizations. And you could say that the number of lives that she's influenced by that practice is actually far more than it would have been if she'd been practicing as a standard psychiatrist. The achievements go in a number of fields over many years, and so the award for lifetime achievement is well-deserved.